Welcome back. In the last few lectures, we have discussed how different DNA tools have revolutionized the field of biotechnology and genetic engineering. Many times I have uh, given you examples which are especially on the medical field. Today we are going to really focus uh, an area based on the plant biotechnology and how genetic engineering has contributed towards that. If you go back and think about my very first lecture where I started emphasizing the need for various type of global challenges, think about abiotic stresses. For example, salinity, heat, drought, all of these are abiotic stresses which are affecting our land, the cultivation area severely throughout the world. Almost 20 percent of agricultural land is getting affected because of the salt stresses and large uh, volume of the overall earth is getting desertified because of different drought situation which is happening throughout the world. As you can see here in couple of you know, images, uh, various type of natural calamities like tsunami, Katrina, many of these uh, natural catastrophe, they leave huge impact uh, not only on the climate that time, but also uh, for the years to come uh, the whole land becomes barren and nothing could be grown on those kind of field. So, these abiotic stresses they impose major limitations on food production in whole world. If you think about human population which is projected to grow almost 50 percent by 2050 and the land which is being used for the food crop cultivation is getting reduced over the period and it is also getting subjected to various type of environmental stress conditions. So, how are we going to address the environmental impact on food production? So, we are facing many challenges globally. The world food grain production must be doubled by year 2050 because we have to meet the demand for the growing global uh, world population. And we have to increase the food production on the limited land area which is available to us. And on one hand the water resources are getting diminished, the lot of lands are getting affected because of the salinity, drought, cold and many stresses. And on the same you know small area which is available for the food crop production, we have to increase the crop productivity. So, what are the biotechnological solutions available to address this challenge? For example, we can increase the crop yield, we can reduce the need for the chemical and water inputs. We have to also increase the resistance for the plants towards the abiotic stresses such as salinity and drought. Also the plant should be more tolerant for the various type of insects and pests. So, in order to uh, improve the crop traits by using biotechnology, uh, there are a couple of case studies I am going to discuss with you. The genetic modified organism or the GMOs is one of the common and the very hot topic which I am sure you often read in the newspapers which you often hear about it. This is one of the uh, GMO is one that has acquired one or more genes from another species and this can be done by using the genetic engineering artificial means right. So, uh, in some way that we can actually you know the uh, cross the barriers of different species and we can move genes from one to other organism for different type of traits and that is what is being uh, utilized and exploited in the field of biotechnology. So, let me take you the very first uh, case study on developing the stress tolerant plants and especially the salt tolerant plant. So, as we discussed that you know there is a need to have the plants which could survive even if you have a hard uh, salt condition, hard drought condition, still if those plants can uh, live in this kind of you know environmental uh, situation then probably we can have the more crop yield. So, traditional breeding uh, which is commonly employed has been unsuccessful majorly uh, to generate the uh, highly tolerant saline or the drought tolerant crops. So, can biotechnology and genetic engineering uh, provide some solution to that? So, in order to do that you know uh, in this study the researchers looked into uh, the pea plant and the pea plants were subjected to different type of stress conditions from uh, 0 to 75 150 millimolar of the salt condition to look into the you know the medium and the high salt. Uh, concentration that how that affects the pea plant. And now uh, the root and the shoots were excised 
and uh, as you can see the roots are getting you know quite affected in these uh, you know the as the salt is, is grow, uh, increased concentration. So, proteins were extracted from these roots samples and now the proteins were separated using uh, a gel format which is two dimensional gel where proteins are separated based on the isoelectric point and their molecular weight. Lot of spots which you can see on these uh, gel images which are actually uh, showing you that the proteins uh, obtained from the roots which are affected from the salt conditions. Now, what kind of protein changes are being seen as the salt concentration is increasing? After doing this analysis as you can see in the highlighted circle part that you know a group of protein looks quite highly elevated and, and those protein definitely showed that you know increasing response uh, to the salt stress condition and of course, one will be curious to know that what those proteins are right. So, uh, another experiment was done where a salt sensitive and salt tolerant arachis hypogea uh, another type of you know uh, the uh, plant was taken and again their proteins were compared uh, using proteomic kind of investigation. And as you can see on the left side uh, the protein obtained from these uh, callus were uh, separated on these gels two dimensional gels. And again on the lower side uh, a group of protein a set of proteins are highly expressed uh, which is shown in the circle red circle here. Uh, which is you know very similar to the, uh, the kind of pattern which you have seen in the last uh, slide where, where I showed you the pea plants getting affected because of the high salt condition. So, looks like in the similar area of you know same molecular weight uh, and same pi uh, a set of proteins are getting highly over expressed and what those proteins are. As we will go in the next module I will talk to you about you know how protein technologies work and that time you will be also exposed to the mass spectrometry based uh, uh, proteomic investigation. But for the time being uh, to keep the context here uh, you should uh, know that you know the mass spectrometers are one of the powerful analytical tools which can be used to identify uh, the proteins of interest uh, where you can look at the peptide sequences and do the database search to identify what are the proteins. So, in this case let us say from this gel piece you have excised the protein sample, you have digested them to make peptides and now those peptides are subjected to the mass spectrometers to identify what is the this protein of interest because this is what you want to identify that what this protein is. So, when researchers did this work they identified this protein is a group of family of the protein which is pathogen resistant uh, 10 protein PR10 protein uh, and there are a couple of members of those proteins which were identified. Now, can we use this information? and use it back in the genetic engineering approach is what is shown you in the next slide where an agrobacteria mediated transformation system was used to do the genetic engineering approach. Now, you know this protein uh, PR10 which is coded by a gene PR10 uh, can we introduce that in the plant system and whether this particular uh, gene could boost up the plants tolerance to the environmental stress condition for example, salt stress condition. And there are different you know the gene family the for the PR10 is a large uh, gene family this is specifically one member PR10.1 was used in this particular experiment. So, you have been you know uh, uh, we have been discussing about the vector map now you can see that you know this vector map uh, different diversification sites are there the promoter site is there and now we want to introduce this uh, PR10 gene of our interest. Uh, we are using here one of the agrobacteria mediated transformation system in which uh, the PR10 gene construct has been introduced now uh, in the bacteria which is now getting uh, you know co-integrated this plasmid inside the plant cell. How this exactly work I will you know, elaborate in some more slides later on, uh, but ideally you are trying to introduce this particular gene of interest in the plant by using uh, this transformation system which is agrobacteria mediated transformation. Couple of images shown you here that how some of these things are experimentally done in the lab where you know uh, when you want to introduce these genes from you know, one system to the system then you have to do the you know, series of the experiments uh, based on the tissue culture uh, based methods uh, in the lab inside the greenhouse condition. And then slowly you can you know uh, take these uh, small implants where uh, your gene of interest has been introduced. Now, you are growing them further and you are trying to provide them the, you know the limited environmental uh, conditions so that they can grow in the beginning and then slowly you want to test the effects of the, the gene which you wanted to test out. So, in this case when researchers tested the, the utility of PR10 genes 
uh, in a different crop because you know you want to you have identified the gene from P, what is the impact of this particular gene tolerance into another plant species which is Brassica napis or the canola plant which is another plant of highly economical significance. Uh, so, if you now look at the seedlings of the non transgenic and the PR10 transgenic, uh, they show you quite a bit of difference uh, that the no salt is of course, you know uh, both are surviving quite well, but as the salt con concentration is increased to 75 millimolar. In this case, you can see that you know the uh, transgenic plant which has incorporated the PR10 gene of interest is having a much more tolerance. This is another image which is showing you the greenhouse grown plants now. Uh, in the high salt condition even up to 150 millimolar, these plants were able to uh, grow and survive uh, as compared to the, uh, the non-transgenic or the control plants. Uh, and then uh, similar utility was tested uh, in the Arabidopsis plant and now you can see that you know these Arabidopsis seedlings are quite able to you know, tolerate uh, the high salt con uh, condition. So, again this gene is doing something in the plant uh, which is you know kind of increasing the plant tolerance towards the salt concentration and that was seen in the case of uh, canola, it is seen in the case of Arabidopsis. Let us come to another example of a uh, very successful example which is golden rice. Uh, as you know we are all aware that you know the large number of uh, children become uh, almost blind because of the vitamin A deficiency and can genetic engineering provide some solution. Uh, to create the rice and one of that attempt was, was done which is known as golden rice. I have shown you here uh, two highly cited publications uh, of this area where uh, they have engineered the pro vitamin A or the beta carotene biosynthetic pathway into the carotenoid free rice endosperm and another study which was uh, which has shown that you know you can improve the nutritional value of golden rice by increasing the pro vitamin A contents and they have expressed in this case uh, a side transgene which increase the carotenoid contents of the mage callus. So, uh, in these studies uh, what they did uh, they wanted to look at the transgenic variety production which could be supplemented with two daffodil genes which can enable the production of the grain containing beta carotene which is a precursor of vitamin A. The daffodil genes encode phytoene synthase or the psi. And this golden rice too contains the psi gene from mage and carotene desaturatase from Ervinia uridiovora. And overall they observed an increase in the total carotenoid of up to 23 folds. So, after discussing the successful example of rice which is golden rice uh, which is grown in the large areas and has really changed uh, you know the uh, nutritional quality of the rice. Now, let us come to the, the third uh, most uh, you know cited topic uh, resistant to insect pest. Uh, the large number of you know, crops and the, the, the food cr uh, crops in fact even get affected because of the pests and insects which affect in the, uh, uh, when they are grown in the field. So, the pesticides and insecticides are used uh, to protect the plants from the impact of uh, these pests and insects which are you know, very harmful for the plants. However, these insecticides and uh, you know these chemicals are quite uh, you know uh, detrimental for even human health. So, uh, you know, since 1940s you know uh, people have started reporting many drawbacks of the existing insecticides including uh, DDT uh, which lack a specificity, it is non-selective, it is actually toxic to the human health uh, as well as many of the non-target animals. Uh, once you uh, spray these type of you know chemicals on the plant uh, then they come from water inside the soil and they also get bioaccumulated. You can see that they are getting persistent in the environment, it is very tough to remove them from the environmental conditions. And of course, there is a huge cost of spraying these chemicals on the plant to protect them from these pests and insects. So, can genetically engineered insecticide crops could be created which can you know boost the immune system of the plant for that matter. So, that the plants can now tolerate uh, these kind of infections and still survive in the field. To do that uh, a highly successful uh, you know, uh, example comes where people have used the gene from Bacillus thuringiensis or the Bt gene. Uh, so, Bt is a ubiquitous spore forming soil bacterium which produces insecticidal protein crystals which is known as Bt toxin. This is one of the endotoxin crystal protein which is produced during the spolution process of this bacteria. It was discovered in 1901 by scientist Ishiwata on silkworm. Uh, during 1928 and 31 
they performed some experiments to control the corn borer and you know this was one of the uh, best natural gene product which was used to control the plant pest. And that gave them an idea that can this uh, type of genes be used uh, to protect the plants from uh, you know the deleterious effects of the insects and pests. So, how a genetic engineering approach could be used here? So, there are three primary components of genetic packages which were inserted into the plant. The protein gene which is the Bt gene which is going to produce the cry protein, a promoter sequence which controls where and how much of the cry protein has to be produced in the plant and a genetic marker which can identify the successful transformation experiment for example, the antibiotic resistance uh, which can be used for the screening purpose. So, let us look at how uh, the tumor inducing plasmid or TI plasmid uh, could be used to produce transgenic plants. Let me explain you this in more detail in the uh, following animation. When a plant gets injured, there is release of the phenolic compound acetosyringone, which is detected by Agrobacterium tumefaciens. Upon detection, the virulence genes of tumor inducing TI plasmid get expressed, which encode the enzymes that are essential for transfer of the tDNA into the nucleus of the plant cell. Once the tDNA gets integrated with the plant chromosome, there is release of cytokinins, auxins, etc., which brings about tumor formation in the plant. The useful property of infection by agrobacterium has allowed several foreign genes of interest to be introduced into plant cells as per the requirement. One plasmid of the cell is a TI plasmid without the T DNA. The other plasmid contains the gene of interest along with antibiotic resistance genes placed in between two repeat units that are essential for gene transfer. The gene of interest such as genes for pesticide resistance, better yield etc. invades the plant at the site of injury. Once this happens, the foreign gene gets inserted into the plant DNA which is confirmed by plating on to agar containing the suitable antibiotic. Only those which have taken up the gene will grow on such plates. Agrobacterium tumefaciens mediated a transformation was used here. The TI plasmid was isolated from the bacteria. Now, the foreign gene of interest uh, which is Bt gene in this case uh, was inserted into the tDNA. The recombinant plasmids were introduced into the cultured plant cells by the process of electroporation. Only those plant cells which took uh, this plasmid where the tDNA was integrated into the uh, cells chromosomes, uh, those were taken forward. So, what is the mode of action for this Bt gene? Initially the protoxin parasporal crystals or delta endotoxins, uh, they are ingested by the target uh, insect. Now, these protoxins are activated in their gut because of the alkaline pH which is there uh, which activates this particular toxin. So, you know after uh, these crystals have been taken by the insect when it goes to their gut now that environment of alkaline pH uh, is activating this toxin which was uh, inactive earlier and now the cry protein is going to bind to the receptors in the mid gut of insect which leads to the death of the this particular insect. So, the cry proteins or endotoxin they bind to the receptors in mid guts of insects, they form ion selective channels causes epithelium cells to swell and they lies because of the influx of ions and waters and lead to the death of this insect. There have been large number of successful example for transgenic Bt crops which have been produced worldwide. Uh, I have shown in this table here uh, the transgenic uh, Bt cotton for example, uh, Bt corn, Bt potato, Bt soya bean, Bt tomato, all of these uh, crops having different type of cry uh, proteins uh, which were inserted in the plant 
and as a result now the plant have shown the pest control for different type of pest. So, this particular uh, area has really kind of you know uh, transform has been very revolutionary because now large uh, uh, acres of the you know uh, field where these plants are grown could be protected from these kind of infections and therefore your you know the yield of the uh, food can be very high. However, people have expressed concern that you know uh, what are the potential risk of using these transgenics uh, in the field and especially transgenic insecticidal crops. So, you know one of the potential uh, region could be that you know uh, these transgene could escape into the wheat population uh, depending on the outcrossing from the other uh, crops which are in the same uh, you know uh, neighboring regions. The secondary pest may also proliferate because if you are controlling one type of pest probably another type of you know the pest population um, might also increase. Uh, you know the cry proteins might also get accumulated in the soil over the period of time. Uh, there could be some sort of unanticipated uh, reactions to the human like which could be allergic reactions uh, and these insect population could also become you know resistant to these cry proteins over the period of time. Uh, for example, you know a few uh, cases have been reported where even plants have shown uh, uh, you know the insects have shown the resistance towards these cry proteins. So, this must be you know uh, I, I must admit this is one of the areas where people have both you know uh, pros and cons for the technology. There has been uh, large cases you know where you would have heard that you know because of the BT crop lot of you know farmers committed suicide. Uh, Sometimes the, the big multinational companies they try to make lot of you know money out of this uh, you know proprietary what they have from the licenses. And as a result you know uh, on one hand when we have seen that you know the huge benefits because of you know the uh, increased yield which has obtained because of these uh, transgenic crops. On other hand there are you know certain regulatory issues which are still need to be handled there are certain ethical issues which still has to be addressed. So, this uh, area you know I will leave that up to you to read more about it to you know get more educated in that particular direction and to find out you know kind of you know what you think is the, the, the best approach of you know uh, these kind of transgenic crops. But you know scientifically speaking uh, these transgenic uh, you know the GMO crops have really made lot of you know increase in the nutritional value increase in the you know certain components which can uh, show lot of you know increased productivity for the plants. Uh, how you know we accept the human being is something which remains you know a topic of uh, you know discussion further. So, in summary I think you know uh, uh, in the last several lectures we have been talking about you know the gene cloning technology, the polymerase chain reaction, different ways of you know different lab techniques which we have given you demonstration to, to make the cDNA and do all kind of separation. All of those uh, knowledge uh, moving uh, you know as a part of the genetic engineering technologies uh, is uh, showing lot of application whether you talk about you know the human health or we talk about you know the plant biotechnology. I am sure you can uh, understand that you know uh, by just manipulating the genes of interest by knowing that we know where, what we are inserting, where we are inserting and what kind of trait they may have I think has made huge you know and the tremendous changes in overall applications. So, in today's lecture in summary uh, we have talked about you know how genetic engineering technologies could be used to move the genes from one to other organisms and we have shown you a couple of examples of the salt tolerant plants to the uh, golden rice plants and also looking at the uh, you know the crops which are having highly insecticidal resistance properties. The genetic modified plants have definitely lot of potential for increasing the quality and quantity of the food worldwide and there has been many example of you know the, the BT crops. Uh, but as I mentioned that you know uh, how to take these kind of you know uh, technologies forward and what, what are their you know ethical and economical consequences of that I think uh, this is an area of you know discussions and one need to you know be very open to look into the pros and cons of these technologies. Thank you very much. Thank you.